Modeling linear relationships. This begins our notes for Unit 3. Functions can be used to model the relationship between two quantities in real-world problems. So we can model the functions that we learned in our previous unit by representing these real-world situations. Look at example 1. A shoe store offers free points when you sign up for their reward card. Then for each pair of shoes purchased, you earn an additional number of points. The graph shows the total points earned for several pairs of shoes. Find and interpret the rate of change and initial value. We know from our previous unit that rate of change is the same thing as slope. So when you find the rate of change for this graph, we are going to do our similar triangle. We start with a point from the left and slope is rise over run, so we're going to rise. We went from 60 to 90, so that's up 30. And we're going to run from 2 to 4, we went over 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So the rate of change is you get 15 <coughs> points for each pair of shoes that you purchase. Our slope or our rate of change is 15. What does the rate of change mean in this situation? Well, it means that you earn 15 points for every pair of shoes that you buy. What is the initial value or the y-intercept? So where this graph crosses the y-axis, if we extend the graph, it's going to be right here at 30. Remember, your y-intercept is where the graph crosses or intercepts the y-axis. If we intercept the y-axis at 30, then for this situation, that means that before you buy any pairs of shoes, just signing up for this club, you earn 30 points for signing up. So for this graph that represents this club, you get 30 points to sign up, and then they add 15 points every time you purchase a pair of shoes. All right, example two. The table shows how much money Ava has saved. Assume the relationship between the two quantities is linear. So assume that there is a constant rate of change. Assume that we can write this as like this. Find and interpret the rate of change in the initial value. To find the rate of change of a table, I look at the change in the x value. To get from 3 to 4, I add 1. 4 to 5, add 1. 5 to 6, I'm adding 1. Change in my y value, to go from 1 to 130, I add 20. 130 to 150, add 20. 150 to 170, I add 20. We know that rate of change from our previous unit is the change in y over the change in x, and 20 over 1 equals 20. So my rate of change is 20. Now what does that mean for this situation? The table shows how much money Ava has saved, so each month she is saving $20. So the rate of change means that Ava saves $20 every month. What is the initial value or the y-intercept? Well, we know that slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b. Y-intercept is when x is 0. In my table, it does not tell me when x is 0. So I'm going to have to plug in a point and my slope in order to find the y-intercept. So I'm going to use the point 310, 3, 110, and my slope is 20. Plug each number in where it goes in the equation. My 20 is going to be the slope. 110 is going to be the x. I mean, I'm sorry, the y, and 3 is going to be the x. Solve for B, 
20 times 3 is 60. Bring everything else down. Subtract 60 from both sides. And my y-intercept is 50. Now what does that mean for this situation? The initial value is where she starts. So she started <coughs> off saving $50. She started out with $50. All right, number three, interpreting a verbal description. The Smith family is driving from Boston to Chicago. The total distance of the trip is 986 miles, and each hour they will drive 65 miles. So because this is each hour, they're going to 65 miles. I know that's going to be my slope. And the total distance is 986, so that would be my y-intercept. Write an equation to represent the number of remaining miles y after driving any number of hours x. So y equals, my slope is 65, but since I'm taking 65 miles out of my total that I have left each time, that's going to be a negative slope. Negative 65 x plus the total 986. What is the rate of change and what does it mean? The rate of change is negative 65. Each hour they have 65 less miles to cover. My initial value is 986 because that is how many miles they have to go before they leave. So this is the initial value because that is their starting point. Their starting point is 986 miles. Alright, number four. Use the given information a water park charges a rental fee plus $1.50 per hour, so that's my slope, to rent inflatable rafts. The total cost to rent a raft for six hours is $15. So for six hours, I'm paying $15 and my slope is $1.50. Assume the relationship is linear. Find and interpret the rate of change in initial value. I don't know my rate of change, so I have to solve for it. My equation is y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in 15 for the y because that's the total cost that we spent for 6 hours. $1.50 times 6 is 9. And I'm solving for my initial value by taking 9 away from 15. And that leaves me with 6. So my constant rate of change is $1.50, which is what they charge per hour. <coughs> and my initial value is $6, which represents the rental fee. A teacher already had a certain number of canned goods, so B represents the number of canned goods that she has for the food drive. Each day of the food drive, the class plans to bring in 10 cans. So that's my slope. The total number of canned goods for day 10 is 205. So after day 10, they have 205 cans. Assume the relationship is linear. Find and interpret the rate of change in initial value. So I know my rate of change is 10 because that's how many cans they're bringing in per day. So I'm solving for my initial value, the initial number of cans. 10 times 10 is 100. Bring everything else down. When I subtract 100 from both sides, I find that they start out with 105 cans. So the rate of change is 10 cans, which is how many they bring in per day, each day, and my initial value 
is 105 tens, which is how much they start on the first day. And number six, a snowboard instructor charges an initial fee plus $40 per hour for private snowboarding lessons. Carmen paid $265 for six hours of instruction. Assume the relationship is linear. Find and interpret the rate of change in initial value. So 265 equals $40 for the six hours plus the initial value. 40 times six is 240. And I'll subtract 240 to find my initial value of 25. So the rate of change is $40, which represents how much they pay per hour. And my initial value is 25, which is the initial fee that you pay the snowboard instructor before you take any hour's worth of lessons. And this concludes the notes that we will go over for modeling linear relationships.